So, we are going to uh, try and debug some uh, non-trivial writer bug and we are going to do this by recording the execution of writer um, where we first reproduce the bug and uh, this is some video which I've recorded a couple of months ago and now I'm trying to remember what was going on so to reproduce the bug, uh, we select the entire document and then we copy the document and paste it while everything is still selected, which will replace the entire content. And then we uh, push the undo button and it's going to crash. So, now we um, use the rr replay command to replay what we have recorded. And this puts us at the GDB prompt. And now we start to set a few, uh, well, since it was crashing in undo, we set a breakpoint on when undo actions are created in writer. And now we um, just continue the replay, which is going to take a while. By the way, I've cut out uh, quite a few chunks of the video where nothing interesting was happening. So, um, yeah, this sort of thing probably took longer. And now we are at the point in time where the first undo action was created. Now we turn on logging about which more later. And the backtrace of uh, the breakpoint indicates that um, this is a delete undo action, which makes sense as the first thing that actually modifies the document is um, that the selection that we pasted into is deleted. So um, the next undo action um, turns out that there are some uh, flies that is floating um, objects uh, inside the document and for every one of these we get uh, an, uh, an own uh, undo action that is stored inside of the uh, delete action uh, which you can still uh, see on the stack at frame 6. So yeah, there are several of these. And they will turn out to be quite uninteresting for this bug. But yeah, we'll have to wait through them. And now we are an, an, at another interesting point where the undo action for the paste is being created. Now the document is basically empty um, and uh, the content from the clipboard document is being pasted. And then we arrive at another undo action, which is again about fly objects that are being pasted this time and yeah at this point we um, just uh, express our disinterest in uh, floating objects by disabling this breakpoint and now we continue and we arrive at the position where the crash happens which uh, in this case is an assertion failure so now we look at the backtrace to see where we crashed. And uh, if you look at frame number four, we are currently trying to set a field mark into the document. And the field mark is a 
kind of bookmark that represents a word compatible text field. So now we are going to look at this object in detail. And the most interesting bits here are the MN start node and MN start content members. These indicate the position um, where the um, field mark is being inserted, and also end node and end content. Um, now we are trying to have a look at um, what is actually there in the document at this position. And it turns out that the node there is an end node, which is obviously incorrect because an end node uh, cannot contain um, field marks or any text at all. So now the question is, where is this uh, object being created? What was the state at that point? And to find out, we are going to use a, a very interesting feature of R, um, which is we are going to set a breakpoint conditional on the address of the object. And then we are going to reverse continue, which is extremely useful. Um, so this basically runs the program in reverse. And uh, every time when we switch the direction which the program is being, being executed, we, uh, it will just the first time stop immediately at the position where you, where, uh, where you already are. Uh, so you have to do it twice in that case. And well, we end up at the, uh, in the constructor of this uh, object that was later causing the crash. And now we see that in frame number three is SW undo delete. So this uh, object is being created as part of the delete um, undo object. And now we um, switch to GDB's text uh, user interface, uh, TUI, to uh, step through the code a little bit. Um, you can switch with control A. And now that the object is initialized, we print its members and we see that they have exactly the same value that they had at the point when the crash happened. And then we look at the node that is uh, at this index. And uh, for sure, it's not an end node. It turns out it is a text node. So at this uh, point in time, the document looked different than at the time when the crash happened. And now we try to look at the uh, actual text in the text node. Um, unfortunately, this is not as convenient as it could be. And we see here the three magic characters, control A, uh, control whatever that is, and control B at the end, that uh, indicate the start position, separated position, and end position of a field mark in text. Now we are going to take a look at the most important data structure of a writer document, the nodes array. And because this is a very large document, it's going to be uh, quite inconvenient to look at it in the terminal. So that's why we turned on the logging in GDB. So we can now look at the log in a text editor, which has far more useful search features. And we quickly find the uh, node that contains the field mark by searching for its index. And um, here we can see that it's surrounded by start nodes and end nodes. And um, the uh, nodes array contains a tree structure, essentially, that is encoded into the array via uh, start nodes and end nodes that indicate the nesting level. So typically, uh, in this case, um, what you are looking at is a table, and the start nodes and end nodes are table cells. Now we have continued to the place where the crash happens and printed the nodes array at that time. And 
now we can uh, compare these two node arrays in the um, text editor from the log file and we can see that yes indeed the uh, index of this text node is different than uh, what it used to be previously and now we are going to um, take a look um, to see what uh, other difference there might be and the first question is uh, what about this table does it still start in the same position and we can see that the table node is also um, shifted by one uh, position and uh, apparently um, the uh, previous table which you can see up here its last text node is still at the, the same position as before and it's followed by three end nodes that uh, indicate the end of a table and uh, then we have this here section node which existed previously but uh, now when the crash happens there is no section node anymore and uh, this is the difference why it's crashing so now the question is why is there no section node anymore and if there is a section node there should also be a matching end node somewhere so we are going to have a look at the end of the document now to see what the situation is like there and we see that the uh, size of the document differs by uh, just one node and there is actually a section node there so another interesting question is what did the document look like at the uh, start of the uh, delete undo actions undo so we are going to take a look at that next and by the way this nodes array is printed by some hundred lines of custom Python code that is loaded by GDB it creates this nice uh, indentation to indicate the nesting level of the nodes so we re reverse continue to the uh, start of the undo execution and it turns out that we see here a section node at index 19 and now we look if this is the same section node as we can see in the other um, points in time and we see that yes indeed it is and that the difference between these two is that it used to be before the table but at the time where it crashes it is after the table And then uh, what actually is the difference here between these two? If you look at the lower document, then it has an additional text node just previous to the section node.
And if we search for this uh, node pointer, then we don't find it uh, anywhere except here. So it looks like this is indeed a, the, the extra node that is uh, also part of the problem here. So a few general points about the nodes array. If you look at the one that is visible in the terminal, then the body text uh, starts at node 17 and uh, goes until node 22. And uh, there is just two text nodes and a section in the body of the document. Everything preceding that is uh, special things like text frames and um, there is an only node in there. So that, that means there is some embedded object in the document. The other special top level sections might contain things like footnotes or tracked changes, but uh, there are no such things in this document. So what are we going to do next? We are going to have a bit of a look at the code inside of the undo implementation for SW undo delete and see um, the many interesting things that it does. So this is the point at which it restores the SW history, which contains various things such as deleted um, flies and bookmarks and whatnot. And here, this was the code that handled the start node. And here is some code handling special cases where sections are being inserted or deleted. And here is Yet another yet different case that handles section nodes. And this is the part that handles the end node. And there are a couple of different members that are in the SW undo delete object that are for these various special cases. Here, once the um, model has been updated, the layout is being recreated. But, well, we didn't even get to that point, so that's not where the bug is anyway. So now we look at the object itself and we see that well, this would be one of these special cases. We don't have a valid pointer here. And we see there are these members like MN sect diff, MN replace dummy, and so on, and this table del last node and del full para and none of these special cases are active. So it looks like a plain ordinary delete. The delete undo has lots of individual steps and they all have to be done in a particular order because some of them depend on previous steps and yeah, if the order is not the right one then you'll have problems. Um, yeah, but 
Um, another interesting question here is about this nodes array at the start of the undo. Um, is it actually looking plausible or not? Because that would indicate whether the delete undo action is the one that has the problem or whether the um, paste undo action is the one that has the problem. And if we look at it here now in the lower um, pane of the text editor, then we see that there are um, two text nodes in the body of the document. One is inside of a section and the other one is outside of, sec of the section. And uh, this is maybe um, a bit suspicious because um, the uh, paste would have been uh, executed after the uh, after the um, document has been deleted completely and at that point there should really be only one text node in the document left over and if the undo of the um, paste has created a nodes array which has two text nodes then it is a bit suspicious so now we are going to look at the situation when the uh, undo action for the uh, paste was created. And we uh, go a bit up the stack to see the code that uh, is in SW doc that creates this undo action. It is created before the paste is uh, executed, so before anything is in inserted into the document. And it is passed just the insert position. And the way it works is that um, there is a separate update function for this undo object that is called later after the content has been in inserted. And at this point in time, before anything is inserted, the nodes array looks like this. So we see that in the body, um, there is just one text node inside of a section node. So there, uh, there is no um, text node preceding the section node, uh, but still inside the body. The only other text node is node number six, which is in some sort of uh, text frame. So, we have continued until the uh, paste has been executed and the content has been inserted into the document. Now we have the situation uh, before the content was inserted in the bottom viewport of the editor. And we want to look at uh, the situation now that the uh, content has been inserted. So we print the nodes array again. And now we look at the nodes. We try to find our node there and, uh, well, it's not there somehow. We find the previous nodes arrays. Hmm, this is weird. So somehow there are lots of notes in this document, but the node addresses are not the same as previously. Oh, well, 
the problem was that we were looking at the wrong documents nodes array. This is the nodes array of the temporary clipboard document and not of the real document. So, yeah, well, sorry for wasting a bit of time, but uh, this sort of thing tends to happen when debugging. So now we need to look where we can get the uh, real nodes array from. And uh, apparently this uh, copy function is called on the uh, SW doc of the um, source documents, but the insert position parameter um, must of course know the target document. Now we take a look at what is going on. And we see that inside the body, the very first node is a text node preceding a section node. And then at the end of the document, there is a text node followed by a section node followed by another text node inside the section. And if you look closely at the address of this text node with index 3760, it also exists in the middle nodes array, but it does not exist in the one that is a second from the bottom. So it was inserted by this paste operation. And the middle uh, viewport was from the time when the undo of the SW inserts had run, had finished, and it's still there. So it was not deleted by the undo of SW undo inserts. Now we um, continue until the time when the uh, undo of the paste is executed so that we can have a look at what is going on there. And we step through the code. stop to take a look at the member variables of the object. We see the uh, node index 3760 as the end position of the insert. So this would presumably be the last node that has been inserted. But it is uh, also a node that has been inserted. It did not exist previous to the insertion. So here the uh, nodes are moved from the um, documents nodes array into a separate nodes array that stores content uh, that is preserved for undo.
And here, um, one of the nodes is being deleted. And this would be a text node that is being deleted. Now we want to step backward a bit to see um, which node it was. Reverse next is a bit slower than next, but it does work. <laughs> Now the node that is being deleted is the one with index 18. So it is the one at the start of the um, undo range that we saw printed earlier, if you remember the SW and range base class of the SW undo inserts and its members. Now we try to find the node in our previous printout, but it does exist despite us not finding it. And the explanation for this is multiple inheritance. The top level node class is not the first base class of SW text node. And here we want to set a breakpoint in the constructor, a conditional on the node address. And it is, uh, important to set this on the SW node constructor and not on its subclasses because um, the addresses that are printed here in the uh, from the SW nodes array are SW node addresses and these um, these types use multiple inheritance so the subclasses don't necessarily have the same this pointer now we reverse continue to where this node was created. And we see that um, unsurprisingly it was created while um, inserting the uh, clipboard content inside of the copy impl impl function. In this piece of code, if there is no text node at the destination, the pdest text node variable is null, then a text node is created. And what is at the insert position? What kind of node is there? It is index 18. And we expect to find the section node there. So the clipboard content is inserted before the section node.
and as we have seen the SW undo inserts does not delete this text node that was inserted here. So now we investigate the code in a bit more detail, how it undoes the insertion to see if we find anything interesting that looks like it would delete inserted nodes. And there is this bit of code that does indeed delete an inserted node, which is a text node. But we did see this code being executed in the debugger, and it did not delete this text node. It deleted a different text node. And the else branch in this case wouldn't do anything much different. It would just delete the text node in a different way. So now we want to find out more about this variable mp text format call, like how it is initialized. And we see that it gets value if the uh, point of the rpum parameter is on a text node. So that means the start node is a text node, start of the uh, insertion range. And a text node always has a paragraph style associated with it, so in that case it's not null, if you manage to get into this branch and assign it. And now we look a bit at the code which inserts the clipboard content. Here the undo object is being created. And we see that this variable is even initialized depending on the source um, text node and not anything that's at the target insert location. So still nothing terribly interesting. Now this setInsertRange function is called after the content has been inserted and it updates various member variables of the uh, undo object such as the end position.
and now we take a look at the copy function It does not do a whole lot before it creates the undo object. It is passed the parameters rpm, which is the source range that is being copied, and rpos, which is the insert position. And the uh, variables p start and p end point to the start and end position position of the um, source range. There is some code to handle special cases like um, if there is no text node where the uh, cursor can move forward or backward into Here we have one of writer's favorite code patterns, the do-while false loop with a break in the middle. But what we are actually interested in is um, places that um, use or manipulate the a inspose variable, which is the insert position. And we can see here a uh, temporary text node is being inserted. In case the destination uh, position does not have a text node, but some other node. And as we can see, the source range did have a text node at the start, but the uh, pdes text node variable is null in our case, so that's why we create a uh, text node at the insert position. And now we want to actually step through this code. And let's see, why did we skip that previous block? So we certainly don't have B column cell true. So maybe it's because the start position is at the start of a paragraph. That's the third part of the condition. Now the end node of the source range is a text node. That's why we get into this branch. So the top, that's the branch we have taken. If we hadn't taken that branch, we would have split the text node at the insert position and so on. But that is entirely hypothetical. And this is another branch not taken.
Now here the um, source uh, and text node um, it copies the text to the destination text node that was just created. And there is this very interesting comment before that, which says something about the uh, insert node being deleted during undo, which kind of sounds like something we would like to happen. So there is this variable that is indicated here. And it is indeed passed on to the uh, under object later. And uh, what does the under object do with it? It sets this boolean variable to false and increments the uh, one of its um, positions and it says something about a table selection hmm clearly we don't have a table selection in this case so this point it's kind of curious why this code exists, why it was added. And the rest of what this function does is not interesting at this point. Now we try to look for places where this variable would be set to true. And the first place is where it's being declared. It's set to true if the start node of the source range is a text node, which is the case here. And the second place, we don't hit that one. And we hit the third place, this here, if the destination position does not have a text node. And here we even have this puzzle ensure insertion to check that the variable is not set to true twice basically. So now we take a look at the uh, git log of the uh, undo implementation here to see if there is um, anything interesting there, why this code was added. So we see one commit where it was translated from the uh, Klingon original to English and the uh, original comment was added in the initial import commit CVS from the year 2000. So that uh, code was always like this, so we found out not very much here. But clearly it's very suspicious that we hit two places in the code that want to set this boolean variable to true if there is this assertion about that causing problems in undo. Because uh, in every place where this variable is set to true, a text node is being inserted or an existing text node is being split into two. So now we try to look at the git log of the um, copy code. And we see that this was uh, actually not added in the initial import. It was added in some uh, in the year 2003 at a time when Star Office releases had some code name from Star Wars or something.
and there are two um, bugs cited here but unfortunately these IDs um, are for the star office internal bug tracker that has been lost forever now so they are also useless to us we won't find out what the scenario was that was fixed by this commit one often finds interesting things in the uh, git log but unfortunately not this time So now we take a bit of a look at the uh, undo code to see if we could learn anything from there, given our improved understanding of the copy code that we have now. And in particular, if this um, condition would have any effect there. So here we see this boolean member mb start was text node is checked, but it does not result in deleting any additional nodes or anything like that. It just moves the cursor. Here again is the code that deletes one um, text node. But clearly there's no way for this undo code to delete more than one text node, which is what we would need here. And here we actually saw the first line of, of this debug output was the also ensure being printed. So now we step through the undo code and we check what exactly is being moved here. And by the way, I'm positively surprised that this OSL ensure was actually an indicator of a real problem because a lot of these uh, old assertions are just noise based on basically wishful thinking. And we are again at the place where the text node is being deleted. And we see there are two text nodes before the section node. And then we mess up with the keyboard and accidentally suspend our debugger, but that can be fixed. So clearly the problem here is that in this situation where the uh, paste inserts two text nodes, the undo must delete two text nodes and not only one. If you want to find how we fixed this uh, bug, then you can just search for the issue ID in the git log and look at the patch.
thank you for your attention if you made it this far and I hope I was uh, able to convince you that uh, record replay debugging and the reverse continue feature is uh, really quite useful when figuring out tricky problems such as this. And we even managed to do it in a single GDB session this time. There is one uh, more uh, very useful trick that we didn't get to use this time, which is that you can set a watch point on a variable with GDB and then reverse continue and then stop when this uh, variable got its current value.